Instead, it is accelerating. Okay, we'll talk more about acceleration later in the week. Let's just talk about it in terms of a general sense now. Acceleration is when an object's velocity changes. Okay, and there's three ways for that to happen. It speeds up, slows down, or changes direction. We'll be looking at two of those today in terms of objects speeding up or slowing down. The first thing we're going to look at is a nice upward exponential curve. Okay? How is this different than the other ones we've seen so far? Exactly, it's curved. Okay, so when the graph is curved, okay, so when it's curved, velocity is not constant. Therefore, there is some kind of acceleration. Object is speeding up or slowing down. Okay, so let's examine this and see what the object is doing. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. You've seen this kind of graph before. Okay, let's look at these positions over time. So x0 is down here, x1 is here, x2, x3, and x4. What do we see about our displacements? Okay, well, initially from x1 to x0, not, not very far. Okay, from x1 to x2, we're going a little bit further in that time period. From x2 to x3, still a little bit further. And then from x3 to x4, we're going even further. Okay, so as we can see, we're covering more distance in every time period. And the time periods are the same, okay? From, t, from 0 to t1 is the same, from t1 to t2 is the same, from t2 to t3 is the same time, and from t3 to t4 is all the same time. Okay, so we're covering more distance over time. So if we're covering more distance over time, or our displacements are greater over time, what do we know about our object's velocity? Exactly, it's getting faster and faster. So the way we'll describe our object's motion for a nice upward curve line, where it goes here and curves upward, is going to be a positive increasing velocity. Okay, it's getting faster and faster over time. Still going the positive direction. Okay, remember our positive direction is upward, so it's in the positive direction and it's getting faster and faster. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay, now let's look at a shape, another curve shape. This time, I like to call it the humpback shape. Okay, it looks like the back of a whale, or like Quasimodo. So looking at this, okay, we have time one here. Okay, it's curved again, so we know that it is going to be a non-constant velocity. That means the object is speeding up or slowing down. Okay, so hopefully we see that the object is doing what? Okay, right, slowing down. How do we know it's slowing down? Well, we said before that when our displacements are getting bigger and bigger, that our object must be speeding up. In this case, our displacements are getting smaller and smaller. See, the, from x0 to x1, from here to here, is a very large distance. From x1 to x2, you get smaller. From x2 to x3, it's even smaller. And then from x3 to x4, it's just a little tiny section there. Okay, what about our direction, though? Yeah, we're still getting further and further away. You see that x1 is further away from x0, x2 is still further away from the origin from x1, x3 is further away than x2, and x4 is further away than x3. So we're still going in the positive direction, but our object is slowing down. So we're going to say that our motion for this shape on a graph is defined as positive, but a decreasing velocity. Okay, positive, but decreasing velocity. All right, just two more shapes, and we'll finish up here with these. And these two are a little more difficult because now we're changing direction. All right, we're coming back the other way. So the first one we're going to look at <coughs> is going to be a shape that looks like the mirror image of that humpback. Okay, now we're coming back the other way. Our object is going to start up here at x naught. 
Okay, this thing going to be at x1. Now it's x2. x3. And there's x4. Okay, so we know that it's going to be negative because it slopes going the other way. All right, so the first thing we know is that it's going to be negative. Now we need to figure out the object is speeding up or slowing down. Speeding up and slowing down is just based on speed. Is it covering more distance in every time period? So let's look at that real quick. All right, so here from x0 to x1, very small distance. x1 to x2, a little bit more. x2 to x3, even more. x3 to x4, even more. So is our object speeding up or is it slowing down? Okay, it is speeding up. It's covering more distance every second. All right, that's a very difficult one for people to think about because you see, oh, well, it's, good. it's getting more and more negative. Well, that's true. It is getting more and more negative. But the negative, that just tells us the direction. Okay, remember, direction is part of our vector quantity. And positive negative just mean direction. When we see it getting a steeper and steeper and steeper as it goes down, okay, and as you can see, it's like, imagine yourself on a roller coaster. If you go here, slower, slower, slower. And as you go down that incline, that hill, you get faster and faster. All right? So we have that negative but increasing velocity. All right, one more shape. One more shape. One more shape. So let's make one. Looks just like this. Okay? So the mirror image of that first curve line we put up there. Our object is going to start up here. We'll say that's x naught. Okay, x1 is here. x2 is here, so we're just making these corresponding positions, just like we did before. Right, x3, and then way down here is x4. Okay, what do we see about our positions here? x0, oops, x0 to x1 is a large distance. From x1 to x2 it gets shorter. x2 to x3, a little bit smaller. x3 to x4 is even shorter. Okay. So we can describe the motion here. We know it's negative, again, because it's going back that opposite direction, that downward general slope. Okay, But it's negative, but decreasing speed. It's getting slower and slower. It covers less time as you go through a negative, but decreasing speed. All right? All right let's look at an example real quick here. And we're going to make a corresponding velocity versus time graph for our position versus time graph. So I'm going to label my axes. Okay, we're going to make this one position. We're going to make this one time. We're going to make this one velocity. And we'll make this one time. Okay, so let's go ahead and make, I'm just going to draw a general shaped line here. And we'll see if we can make the corresponding velocity graph with it. So it's going to start here. Okay, a little curved section there. A little straight section there. A little curve at the top. Go straight across. See if I can make that one a little bit better, a little straighter. Okay, and then we'll have a lot that goes straight down. All right, so now we're going to make the corresponding velocity versus time graph. We're going to—I'm going to label these sections for you right now. When you start doing these on your own, it's going to be—they're not going to be labeled, but I'm going to go ahead and label them as different sections. So section A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so the lines there—you can tell when the shape changes. So when you take calculus, you'll talk about how the concavity of a line. Okay, that just tells you what direction does it point up or down. Alright, so looking at this, we'll have section A, B, C, D, and E. And I'm going to describe, just like we did before, the object's motion based on that shape. So A, we know it's going faster and faster, and it's in the positive direction. So our, our description of part A will be positive increasing velocity. Okay, part B, we're going to assume that's a straight line. That's a pretty straight line. That's going to be a positive constant velocity. Part C, still going the positive direction. We're still going further away than we did before. But as we see, we're going slower and slower. So part C is a positive but decreasing velocity. Part D, horizontal line. We know our object is at rest during that time. And part E, negative but straight line. So it's going to be a negative constant velocity. So now we're going to graph that on our velocity versus time graph. And this is the first time we've done it. 
So hopefully we can kind of figure it out here. Right, if it's positive and increasing, we know on our velocity versus timeline that it's going to be positive. Okay, so this is going to be positive velocity, this is negative velocity, and increasing. So it's going faster and faster and faster during that first time period. So we're going to call that part A. B, positive but constant. If an object's velocity is constant, what is it not doing? Exactly, it's not changing. So we're going to have a portion of our graph that's positive, but the, the numerical value is not changing. Okay? Part C, the object is still moving positively, so its velocity still has a positive value, but it's going slower and slower. Okay, so it's going to go right here. All right, so see that it's still positive. Our velocity is going from maybe positive 2 to 0. Okay, still in the positive direction because it still has a positive value, but it's slowing down. Okay, it's covering less and less ground every second. Part D, it's at rest, so it's going to be right there along the axis. And then part E, it's negative but constant. All right, we said before that part B was positive constant. Oops. And part C, if it's going to be, or part E, I should say, if it's negative constant, then it's going to be a nice straight line down here, negative. Right here. Okay. Now, if you want to do a little line for like a piecewise function, you can, but you don't have to. Okay. However, you want to look at it. All right. So hopefully, you have a better idea about uh, motion graphs, laying them to velocity graphs. We'll work on some more in class, and hopefully, get a little more comfortable with doing these laps or these kind of graphs. Thanks.